Have you ever met that someone? That special someone? Oh. Maybe chatting next to the water cooler at your job or in the flickering light of a bar bathroom as they pull your hair out of the toilet you're throwing up in. And then maybe after that meet cute, you go on a few dates, you move in together, you get a dog, you start farting in front of each other, and after a while you start thinking to yourself, you know what? This is the person I want to spend a statistically accurate $30,000 or more on a wedding with. Planning the wedding is stressful. The mother-in-laws are engaged in combat. The caterer cancels on you at 11.59 p.m. the night before. But you know, all of this will be worth it when you stand at that altar looking into the eyes of your future spouse as they proclaim in front of all of your extended family and friends their undying love for you. You can choose whether tonight's gonna end with being a toaster, strudel, or a Twinkie. Oh, God damn it. So a couple's wedding vows posted by their videographer at Lens Culture on TikTok went viral recently. Now, weddings go viral all the time, whether it's a groomsman or a bridesmaid practicing their stand-up comedy routine at the reception or just a weird song choice for the ceremony, but this wedding went viral for all the wrong reasons. The video set TikTok on fire for a few days as users rushed to set up their ring lights and let the world know just how angry they were on the bride's behalf because of the groom's, uh, creative and, uh, unique wedding vows. Now, two weeks later, I'm crawling in, leaving a trail of slime behind me to give my opinion on the situation because everybody has been begging for it. Now, let's go through this rationally and calmly. Ah! No prior judgment and, uh, Let's just see if these vows are as bad as everyone says they are. Anything you want to say to your future bride? I hope we have a lot. Of <laughs> a lot. All right. Starting off strong. There is something just a little off-putting about his demeanor. I want to believe it's just awkwardness because of the camera, but his eyes are so soulless and dead while he's talking. It's giving me serial killer vibes. I just think someone should check on this woman in about six years, just in case. A case needs to be opened on her mysterious disappearance. So yeah, a bit awkward. No, hi honey, I love you, I'm so excited for our future together. Just straight into the physical pleasure he will be receiving from his bride in the scenic woods, alone with the cameraman. <laughs> Kinda weird, but forgivable. So let's just get on with the actual vows. You're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Since the day we started talking, after falling through my bedroom window, within minutes I could tell you were the one for me. This man looks and sounds like he's reading a grocery list and he does not like what's on it. I know not everyone can waste years of their life in high school theater like me, but you know, a tablespoon of conviction and sincerity wouldn't kill you. Unless you're allergic to it, I guess. Then as time went on and I was falling deeper in love with you, I was and always will be one of the easiest people to please. Only two things are required to keep me happy, keep my belly full and my balls empty. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, he here we go. So to preface all of this before we go forward and to give this more context, not only are all of their extended family and friends there, his mother is officiating. And guess what? His two little daughters are also in the audience. I'm sure the drive home was not an uncomfortable experience at all. Hey mom, why did dad talk about his balls so much? And can you be a Twinkie tonight? I want a baby sister. <laughs> Well, you're amazing at half of it. We really need to get you some cooking lessons. Okay, so that's super cool. So he's saying there's only two things that are needed to make him happy. And she sucks at one of those things. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to do simple math. I've been out of school for a while. So that means he's not happy? Not to mention the two things he listed are roles that women have been historically forced to fill for their husbands due to religious, social, and legal pressures. So that's pretty great. He couldn't say, I don't know, your passion for unicycling makes me really happy too or something. Even when my belly isn't full, there is no one I could ever love more in this lifetime. Okay, we're back on track. We made it. Just, just normal, not creepy wedding vows from here on out. Okay, great. Let's go. Unless 
I actually got a chance to meet Margot Robbie. Ah, uh, no. Why would you say that? Why would those words come out of your mouth in that order? Let me very quickly clarify something, okay? My partner and I joke about banging random celebrities all the time. We couldn't even get through the lighthouse without debating about the scenario of being vertically sandwiched between Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe and who in that scenario we would take from the front and who we'd take from the back. Which by the way, the answer is Pattinson in front, Defoe in the back, and if you don't know why, you should look up a picture of Willem Defoe's. But this is your wedding day, dude. Probably one of the most special days of your life, and you open your vows by joking, but not really joking, that you would leave your wife for Margot Robbie? Hear me out, hear me out. This is why this joke sucks. It's because when people make this joke framed in this way, the joke isn't, ha ha babe, I would never leave you for Margot Robbie because I love you so much. What the joke actually is, is, ha ha babe, I would never leave you for Margot Robbie because she would never give me the chance. I mean, if she did give me the chance, I would totally take it. She's so hot and she's probably better at cooking than you. Since the beginning, I was always told I always told you. Oh nice, he can't even read his own vows correctly. I wonder if it's because he jotted them down on the back of a Texas roadhouse napkin and hasn't looked at them since. I was going to make you the happiest woman in the world and give you everything I could possibly give. Well today I'm taking a step further and giving you my last name last name of champions. Notice how even when he isn't actively making fun of her, his language is still very self-centered. It's about what he's giving to her and how lucky she is to have him. I'm going to make you the happiest woman in the world. Give you everything I can possibly give. I'm even so generous I'm giving you my super awesome last name which uh if you didn't hear, it's, uh, it's the last name of champions. God, that's so cringe! No one deserves it more. With you and the girls by my side, I feel like I can conquer anything. Y'all make life worth living, giving every breath of every day a purpose. Life gets even better when the kids fall asleep and you tell me to come to the bedroom. <laughs> Nothing's better than the sound of gagging and headboard slamming. Michael. Everyone keeps telling me that marriage is going to ruin a lot of things. So, not only does he bring up... <laughs> again, for what, like the third, fourth, fifth time now? Apparently it's the only thing she does that he values, remember? In front of that entire audience, his mother, their families, his children, he describes in this weird, dispassionate tone, using very crude language, the type of acts that he likes to perform on his bride. Now let me remind the people in the comments that I know are gonna be like, oh my god, you are so sensitive. It's obviously a joke. It's very clear from their reactions of the mom and the bride that nobody knew his vows were gonna be anything like this. By throwing a bunch of very explicit and degrading humor into his wedding vows without any warning, he's essentially created a captive audience that is forced to laugh at his unfunny jokes out of politeness. Even if the wedding party or some of the guests did feel uncomfortable, it's not like they can say anything. It, they just make the situation worse and cause a scene. You don't want to be the jackass in the audience that stands up in the middle of the ceremony and is like, hey, that's not very nice. The bride looks especially embarrassed at this point because her s life is just being thrown around as a cheap joke with no punchline two feet away from her mother-in-law. What's so upsetting is these jokes could have been hilarious at a small reception with just their friends, but instead he drops all of this right in the middle of the official recorded ceremony. Hey grandkiddos, you want to watch me and your Mima get married? Oh, look at us. We're so young and beautiful. Oh, oh, this is the part where I talk about draining my balls. But I feel that's only if you let it. Even if we fight, argue, or don't see eye to eye on something, it'll never affect the way I love you. Marriage is something I take seriously and I only want to do once. After almost 10 years, I still stand by the fact that you're my soulmate and it'll never change. After today, the only thing changing is me having to deal with the ring on my finger. 
He will forever have my heart, and that's a promise till death do we part. Okay, once again, we are back to normal wedding vows that don't involve gagging or headboard slamming. P.S. Since you're so good at making decisions like Mary and me, you can choose whether tonight's going to end with being a toaster, strudel, or a Twinkie. <laughs> I hate how satisfied he looks with himself after stealing that joke off of iFunny. It's just, once again, he just can't stop talking about <laughs> It's like he's 14 years old or something. Now I hear you, I hear you, my children, I hear your rabble cries, yes. Maybe this is just their sense of humor. Maybe when it's her turn to do the vows, she'll also compare him to other men and degrade his abilities to do traditionally masculine things. It just, it, it's just their sense of humor, right? Let, let's see. My knight in shining armor, my best friend, my biggest pain in the ass. Okay, nice. Uh, she kind of got him. Okay, great. Uh, give us a little bit more, honey. All right, give us a little bit more. Our adventure started a little shy of 10 years ago. And in that 10 years, we have already accomplished so much together and created a beautiful life. When I met you in school, I started crushing on you, but I didn't dare let it be known because I thought you were too good for me. Oh no, honey. Oh no, 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 honey, no. I'm gonna flip a coin and say there's a good 50-50 chance that he is not and never was too good for you. This is a dollar bill. Your lack of self-esteem has blinded you and I am already so incredibly sad. So I let it go. If they say if you truly love someone or something, let it go. And if it comes back to you, then it was meant to be. And boy, did he come back like a boomerang to the skull on a hot summer's day. Here you are standing in front of me on our wedding day. I'm more than thankful for every day with you. You have completely stolen my heart and I honestly never want you to give it back. Notice that while he delivered his vows in a bored monotone, she can barely hold back tears. That's great. I'm still I'm still waiting for the roast, right? Like he he got you. It's it's your turn now. Where where are the jokes? You are one of the most selfless, funniest, caring people I have ever met, not to mention very accident prone. Okay, okay, accident prone. Um is there a traditionally masculine task that you can degrade him for not performing to your standard? Is there a more attractive man that you can compare him to? Can you objectify him a little bit? Let's balance the scales a little bit, okay? We've created two of the most beautiful girls in this world together we bought our first house we've made it through the rough times and the good times and since I have you I know we will always make it through thank you for choosing me to create your life with ah did you catch that remember how I mentioned earlier the very self-centered language the groom used in his vows let's say oh ugh. Today, today I'm, I'm taking, taking a, step a step further and giving you my last name the last name of champions Notice her vows. I thought you were too good for me. We accomplished all of these things together. Thank you for choosing me. All of her language is addressed in either a thankful way towards him or in a positive way about them together as a couple while all of his vows were boosting himself up. I know I'm no model. Oh no, I know I'm no model. Have you seen him? He's no Ryan Gosling. This is why the Margot Robbie joke was not funny contextually and was not okay. This woman clearly has really low self-esteem. You don't joke about leaving your wife for another more attractive woman if you know she has body image issues and you definitely don't do it in front of everyone she cares about. By far not a good cook unless you want soggy meatloaf. <laughs> soggy meatloaf, huh? That sounds really specific. Almost as if there were a specific night where she took the time to make meatloaf for you and you complained about it. And as we all know, I'm the real sleeping beauty with a temper. But thank you for loving me still, the way you do. You are literally making the fairy tale I always dreamed of come true. Well, maybe a little more funnier than I imagined. Yeah, this does really seem like a fairy tale. I remember when Prince Charming kissed Snow White, breaking the spell, and then rode off into the sunset with Margot Robbie ever after. But it's still way more than I could ever ask for. I will forever want you rocking beside me when we're old, talking about our day, making jokes, recalling memories. If you could leave out the passing gas, though, I'd greatly appreciate it. <laughs> okay, 
so farting, you you really got him, you really got him there. Now now y'all are totally even. I love you so much, Michael John Lentini, and I promise to choose you every day for the rest of my life and beyond that. Okay, it's over. Uh, yeah, so this situation's just kind of sad. Yes, the wife had a response to all of the backlash on TikTok, and uh, this is what she had to say. So I'm the bride, and no, this isn't a red flag. We have been together for 10 years now and decided to get married right before our 10th year. This comment received 4,922 comments in response, none of which, I'm gonna tell you right now, is going to change her perception of her husband at all. Why, you may ask? Well, think about a relationship that you're in right now. Would you throw that relationship away just because a few thousand strangers on TikTok told you to? Probably not. This isn't Reddit. If the popular assessment of this video is correct, then yes, the groom is an emotionally abusive douchebag who has been tearing down his bride-to-be's self-confidence for 10 years to the point where he felt comfortable degrading her on one of the most special days of her life. That sort of confidence means that she's probably been truly conditioned to view this behavior as normal, and she is going to continue to defend that behavior, unless through some moment of personal clarity or through the intervention of the people in her life, she changes her mind. At the end of the day, that's her journey to take, not ours. So, the moment you've all been waiting for, what's my assessment of the video? Look, the groom's vows were awkward at best and hateful at worst. But whether this video indicates other abusive behaviors or this was all just a badly timed, inconsiderate attempt at some X-rated comedy, we can't really know that. This is just a tiny clip of their lives, but it is an important one, and it's easy to see why people saw a lot of red flags. My partner and I roast each other constantly. The difference is, it's always fair. I punch you, you punch me, we're a happy family, but we don't do it in a situation where the other person might feel vulnerable or embarrassed. We do it alone, or we do it in a group of close, trusted friends. My assessment of the situation is the reason people hated this video so much is because it just wasn't fair. It was very one-sided and it was done in a very public, formal environment. Be nice to your partner. Don't embarrass them publicly, but also don't get a hemorrhoid over this video. It's not worth it. Okay, and we are done. I don't want to make another video on a wedding ever again. Oh my God!